have been called by God and we've been chosen for this hour. We are no better than anyone else. We're no better than any other denomination except we have been called by his name. Another hard to understand scripture, this time it's 2 Thessalonians. And I think what we've learned in these Bible studies is if there is a quote unquote hard to understand Bible scripture passage, it's that if we take the time to really break it down what it's trying to say, there are some practical lessons for us to learn as spiritual Christians from them. Amen. That when you don't understand something, sometimes that's a little clue that God is trying to tell you that, hey, this might benefit you um, if you would really grasp what I'm trying to say. And there are just some things in the Bible you can't just get from a surface look. You have to dig a little deeper. Somebody say yay? So we're going to go and we're going to discuss what's really not just a scripture, but a, what some people call a troubling principle of God's word. It's mentioned in a couple of Apostle Paul's writings. Um, and we'll just read those passages. And then we're going to say, lay a foundation and come back to those passages. And hopefully by the end of the night, you will understand what Paul was trying to say. So the first one is, in 2 Thessalonians uh, 2, verse 9, and I think Hermano wants to read because she just took a big bite, right? Okay. Okay, so let's see, I should say, uh, where this are you? Let me... The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan, with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked de deception for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong de this delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay, everybody say, God sends, God sends them, them, them a strong delusion. A strong delusion. Okay, anybody ever read this before? How many of you have ever read this scripture before? Okay, and maybe it's kind of a weird thing. If you think about what it's saying, God sends a delusion, or a to delusion means to be uh, to be to be off from the truth or to go into false belief. So so the entire book of Second Thessalonians is about the last day before Christ's return. Uh, the first chapter of the book is encouraging believers. They were handling persecution. God told us that as we get closer to the coming of Jesus Christ, persecution against people who are of the name of Jesus will increase. How I many know that? Okay? Right. And then um, the second chapter, Paul begins to teach about the coming of the Lord, what must take place before Jesus Christ comes back the second time. He starts talking about the way that the spirit of the Antichrist will work. Everybody say the spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah. Eventually, a, a world leader uh, who will proclaim, eventually proclaim himself the Messiah. And he will be the Antichrist himself. He will come. And, um, and then Paul gives probably what is the strongest warning of the book, that in the last days, some people would be sent a strong delusion by God so that they could believe a lie and be condemned, okay? And, and so God sends them a strong delusion. Why? So that they may believe what is false. God is going to help them believe what is false. And that's a pretty tough statement, okay? Right. All right? He mentions a similar point, just so we can kind of set the stage here, in Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Uh, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. Okay, so in this case, God gave them, or I say God, God. This is something God does we're talking about. Okay, so God gave them up to a debased mind. Basically, that means he allowed them to believe they were right in their false thinking. Okay, so if you if you really pause for a moment, we just kind of read those to set the stage. We're going to try to answer these questions, okay? But I want you to think about some things. Number one is... First of all, what exactly is the strong delusion sent by God? Okay, what is it? What, is, what does it mean when God sends somebody a strong delusion? Or God gives somebody a debased mind? What is that? Second of all, what did these people do to cause God to send this delusion? Well, that's important because whatever it is, I don't want it. Right? Because right. <laughs> um, they're going to be they're going to be condemned, which means they're going to be lost eternally, okay? Right. And then the, the third question is to ask is why would a holy and a perfect God, a good God, send a spirit of delusion to people that the end result caused them to be lost, okay? And so if we're in the last days before Christ's return, which I believe we're at least closer than ever, 
<laughs> that was pretty safe, right? That was, that was like the guy on the televangelist saying, I feel somebody out there has a headache. Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you feel like, people. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, wherever we are in the prophetic timeline, we're certainly closer than ever. So if we are in the last days, we should be able to see examples of people who have been given over to a strong delusion. Y'all with me? And so we want to find out what it is, find out why God would do it, find out what brings it on, and we want to identify it in those around us in, the, in order not to be, not to be uh, condescending, but to avoid it in our life. I don't want a strong delusion from God. I want the truth. Somebody say amen. So let's lay some foundational principles. Are you willing to give me about 10 minutes to lay some foundational principles? At first, you're going to think, what are we doing, okay? Because I just told you where we're going, okay? And what we're doing is, is we're going, we're going right there, okay? We're going right there in front of where Jason is, but we're going to go around the provost to get there, okay? We're going to come back around just to kind of kind of set the stage so you can kind of grasp where we're going. And we're also going to talk about a, a very, very, what to some people is a very confusing passage of Scripture, but I love to talk about 1 Kings 22. It's very enlightening. Micaiah and when God sends a, a false spirit or a lying spirit. And so there's so some things that God wants to teach us tonight. Somebody say yay. Amen. First thing is God is always bound to his word. Everybody say amen. amen. Uh, God cannot lie. Numbers 23, 19. How many believe that? Yes. And so the Bible does contain some prophecies that have not yet come to pass. For example, Jesus Christ has not come back the second time. Right. I haven't seen the heaven and earth burn up yet, but it will. And then there will be a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem and no Texas. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise no Lord. allergies. And um, so this is a positive teaching because if God's made you a promise, he will come through. God cannot lie. Somebody say amen. amen. So when we talk about that God's word is sure, though, okay, there is a negative side to it, okay? And I'm sorry we're taking the negative side tonight, but we need to talk about it, okay? okay. And what I mean by that is, is just as God will keep his promises to those who love him and trust him, right. so is God going to keep his promises to bring judgment upon those who disobey his word or do not obey what he tells them to do or love the truth. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. God has promised to save people who allow him to redeem them, who allow him to obey his plan of salvation, and by, by his grace, they take advantage of that opportunity given them. You know, with me? Yeah. God has promised that you're going to make it, and that he that endures to the end shall be saved. That's a promise, okay? Right. Command and a promise. You've got to endure, but if you right. endure, you're going to make it, okay? Right. But also, he has also promised to punish sin and reward wickedness in a negative sense, okay? And so we, this is why kind of what we've all been talking about. It's why we've got to um, we got to allow the Holy Ghost to work in our life. We can't, we can't uh, quench or grieve the Holy Spirit like we talked about last week by not giving the Holy Spirit an area in our life, okay? And even if you've lived for God as long as I have, which is 40, none of your business years, okay? Um, that you can start, you can find yourself coasting where you're not really giving God some new fuel and the Holy Spirit work. And so we've got to have an attitude where we're, we're never allowing the Holy Ghost to be done our life, okay? Right, right. If you're not Jesus yet, then um, <clears throat> you still need the Holy Ghost to work. And you still need Bible study. Somebody say amen, okay? And if you don't believe me, ask your spouse. They can point out areas that, that you definitely need to, but probably not during Bible study because then it would be kind of rough, okay? Um, we we got to get power over our sinful lifestyles. We cannot just continue in sin simply because we know forgiveness is possible because the Bible clearly states that, that those in a sinful lifestyle will not enter into eternal life. Somebody say yay? If we do fall in sin, which we will, you are going to fall in sin. You are going to make mistakes. Yes, you are. Uh, even probably this week, okay, sometime. Uh, hopefully not in the next five minutes, but this week, okay. Uh, you got to get back up. Don't stay down. The righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up. I'm just recapping some of our last few lessons. And the reason is God's going to keep his promise about coming against unrepentant sin, okay? Now, I said that to say this. The Bible teaches us that the word of the Lord is a two-edged sword, okay? So I want you to realize something. Every promise in the Bible, I want you to think about this. It may seem basic, but I'm setting you up, so hang with me. Every promise in the Bible is a good thought, a blessing to those who obey it, but it's also a curse to those who do not, okay? And we could give an example of any promise in the Word of God, but one specific of this, it will help us better understand our subject. So let's read uh, two promises in the Word of God. Psalms 37 and 4, if you're waiting for me to get to the point, we're there, okay? Uh, go ahead, sister. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Oh, I like that one, right? Yeah. Delight yourself in the Lord, 
uh, and He will give you the desires of your heart. How many know God wants to give you yeah. the desires of your heart? You believe that? You believe that? Uh, years ago, I used this analogy several times, but years ago, I was actually preaching from the Scripture, and I was talking to the people, and I, I told the church, I said, we ought to name some things we desire. Not we need, but just things we desire. And I had had my eye on a particular type of telescope, for, for many, many years, and it was way too expensive for me to even think about purchasing, especially at that time in our church. Uh, and all 12 of them were believing God for things. And um, the people in the church, you know. And um, in a service on a Sunday night, this is a true story, on Sunday nights, and I remember this, I stood up and said, I want you to name what you want. A want, not a need, but a want. And I named, I want a Smith Casa Grain uh, six inch small. Uh, scope that's automatic, you know, and I know I can afford it, okay? And two days later, I was walking through Sam's in the clearance section and saw one sitting there and thought, wow, they have a clearance. And I went over and I looked in and the price was like way low, plus it was off, and I was like, oh my goodness, it's like, it, was like, it was like less than $100. And I was like, this is like a $1,000 scope. And I was like, I opened up and there was literally dog food down inside the scope. Where kids would, like put dog food in a you know, porn bag. And I thought, hey, surely it can't be working. So I went home. This is before the days before the, the phones. Okay, <laughs> Went home on the internet, downloaded the manual, printed it out, went back, checked all the parts. It was all there. And so God gave me my scope for like, oh, I was like 80 bucks. <laughs> and so God will give you the desires of your heart. That's a good thing. Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. I'm setting you up. Here's another good promise. Psalms 145 and 16, Brother Yohan. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Now, this sounds like he's saying the same thing, but it's a little bit different, okay? That, that God, eventually, he opens his hand. God, is a, God doesn't like to be a close-handed God. Right. I want you to grasp this, okay? There, there's something very powerful coming, so I want you to grasp this, okay? God doesn't like to be a close-handed God. God wants to give people things, okay? And eventually, God satisfies the desires of every living thing. It's exciting when you're believing God for miracles, when you're believing God for good things, when you're believing God for blessings, okay? The flip side of this promise, or the other side of the sword, is this, okay? It's this. Sometimes people, what they desire is not something in God's will. It's really not what God wants for them. You all with me? Some people become, become consumed by one thing, and they pray about it, they fast about it, they want it, it's their heart's desire, okay? That's what they want things to be in their life, or they want something, or they want something to happen, or they want... This to be, you know, whatever. And, and so they pray to God repeatedly. They are literally the woman at the unjust judge in their mind. Like Jesus taught us to pray, knocking every day. Yeah. Okay. okay. How many of you ever been there? You really wanted something? And every time you pray, I mean, even if you were, were saying grace over a, a water burger, you're know, like, oh, yeah, God, by the way. Okay, the first thing you're saying is, God, I need this. Oh, by the way, bless the water burger and give the calories to Pearl or whatever. So, right? You've been there, right? Okay? We used to pray that so much that my uh, sister in law asked, Who's Pearl? Because my girls would always pray, Give the calories to Pearl. For those of you who don't know, Sister Pearl's a little bit bigger than that. So, um, so, uh, they, they pray, okay? And some people, they sincerely pray. And rather than praying whether or not it's God's will, they just pray, I want, I want, I want. Right. And the problem with that is, is that God is the God who opens his hands. He satisfies the desire of every living thing. The Lord will give you the desires of your heart, okay? And so sometimes, hello now, God finally gives in to people's persistence and... and um, and fulfills his word, but when they get what they were praying for, then all of a sudden they realize that they perhaps this was not what I wanted. Right. They get what they want, they don't like what they get. Right. Okay? And of course God did that the whole time. Okay? It's like the kid who wants to eat the whole big bag of MMs in one sitting. And the parents saying, no, 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 no. But please, but please, but please. Okay, do it. <laughs> and they do it and they're like all oh, sick and feeling nasty and it's like okay you got what you wanted okay you want me there okay and sometimes frankly God does it to teach his children a lesson I, I don't recommend that you know like, Dad can I play in the street sure just go out and play in the street you know, you'll learn I don't, there's some things you can't do that but, but you, you know what I'm saying right okay it's like well I want to touch the pot okay go ahead touch the pot you know it's like you know but it's hot well duh that's why I told you to do it <laughs> Okay, 
Anybody else have sarcastic parents like I did? Uh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm unique. Anybody else sarcastic parents like I did? Uh, so I, I'll be careful because we're on SoundCloud. You guys with me? Now we're going around the provost to get over here by Jason. So hang on, we're going to get to the point in a minute, okay? But these are setting us up. I've known people, I've been in a pastor's home all my life, okay? Off and on. And uh, uh, when I say off and on, I went to college and then oh, I was a music director and then became pastor again. So <clears throat> I was a pastor's, yeah, so yeah. You know, I've been in ministry, I've ministry home all my life, been around a lot of people, okay? And I have repeatedly seen people pray for a certain thing. Like, like for a guy, for example, I remember a guy, we knew this guy in church, he really wanted to go, and I almost said this thing in the city and that probably gave it away. He, he wanted to go to this particular city and he wanted this job and he was bugging the pastor, please, da, 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 da. I wasn't the pastor, I was somebody else's pastor. And, <laughs> And uh, which is only two people, you can narrow it down. Right? <laughs> really also my dad, so you figure it out. So, um, but uh, they, he was, he was praying, need a fast, it's got to happen. And and the pastor was like, well, I just don't really feel, that I'm not sure. I heard the conversation, and, and he went on, and this guy prayed and prayed, 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 prayed. He fasted. He went like a 28 day fast. Uh, he was, I mean, he really wanted it to happen. Well, you know what? All of a sudden, and the pastor told him, says, you know. When you pray for something like this, you know, maybe God's trying to tell you something. And he prayed, he really wanted to go to such a system, and he had it all lined out. And I'm talking, and about a year later, okay, it was like the door opened. He came to church and said, we're moving next week. And the pastor's like, okay. I thought, you know, we had decided the doors just open. They're giving me this amount of money. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna put me in this house. I'm moving there. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go to church there. It's gonna be awesome. Da 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 da. And they're gone. Okay. And about six months later, okay, that guy showed back up at church in the hometown. And he looked, and this is no kidding, he looked like somebody had been beaten in with a baseball bat. I mean, not literally, okay, but I mean like, like he, I mean, he was dejected. He walked, his tail was dragging between his legs. I mean, just, you know, puppy dog, that, that's a puppy dog record. And uh, he didn't really have a tail, never right. So, and the whole point was, he got there, he got what he wanted, he got the job he wanted, he got the position he wanted, he got the house he wanted, he had the neighborhood he wanted, had his schools, his kids hated the school, the church turned out there were a bunch of weirdos that had some weird beliefs that were non-biblical. It was kind of dead service. He only been gone. He only went one time before he made the decision. It was on apparently a really the best service they'd had in 20 years. <laughs> okay, the job turned out to not be exactly anything like he wanted it. A lot more work than he, than he wanted. A lot more stress. The house turned out he didn't like the neighborhood. The neighbors weren't friendly. I mean, everything. Then somebody got sick, everything, whatever. And make a long story short, he ended up taking a pay cut to move back to the first town and was working like on a lower level, okay? And I asked the pastor, okay, at that time, I said, and I'm being careful, we've got ambiguous here. I asked the pastor, I said, what happened to that situation? Once they're asked. And the pastor says, he prayed it until God let him find out himself it wasn't his will. He, he prayed it until God, and the pastor quoted, he says that he's the God who opens his hand and satisfies the desires of every little thing. Y'all with me here? And, and so somebody would say, and the person, what their, their family was dying spiritually, he was like, why did God even open the door if that was the case? And, and, and the pastor had to say, here's the deal. God is bound to his word. So, so your persistence caused me to open a door that really wasn't the best for you. God opened the door, but it was kind of a double-edged sword. It wasn't the perfect will of God. Are y'all with me here? Okay. This is why, this possibility is why the apostle James wrote in James chapter 4, verse 13. Uh, take it away. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Everybody say, right. if. Yeah. If it's the Lord's will. How many have ever said, I'll see you tomorrow night? Yes. And what do I say? Uh, Lord's if the Lord will. It's not that I'm not planning to be here. Yeah. Some people say, well, if the Lord wills. And what they mean is there's a sitcom on TV they want to watch. <laughs> That's not what I mean. <laughs> what I mean is, what I mean is, okay, and there's some people I'll say, Hey, we'll see you tomorrow night. We'll the Lord will. And I'll say, the Lord's willing. Because <laughs> I know them, okay? But if I say, if the Lord wills, what I mean is, is I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. Right. I may be sick right. as a dog. I may be dead, which is Louisiana for dead. So, right? Okay? I mean, who, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Right. Right. We got our plans, but I mean, we got to, we got to, and where I got that is the book of James. What he's yeah. saying is, 
is in everything that we do, particularly even more so in life decisions that have a great effect, we've got to take care that we not only just, listen to me, listen to me, don't just pray for things. Pray for things according to God's will. Okay? All right? And it's in this context, one of the most misquoted scriptures of the, of the scripture is, is in, it's this, con, this is the context that James 4, excuse me, let me get choked up about it, that James 4.17 is found. So let me read James 4.17. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Oh man, I, if I had a dollar for every time I've heard that scripture preached out of context, I'd buy y'all steak dinners tonight and we'd have gold plated m ms okay? <laughs> scripture, people don't rip that verse out and they'll be like, bless God if you... You passed the guy on the street. You should have given him twenty dollars. You're a sinner, you know, and you should have won souls. Okay, in context, okay, in context, what he's talking about is the sin of leaving God out of your plans. Right. That's right. He specifically, in context, that scripture is literally about. If you take it in context, which is a really great thing to do. Don't get quiet on me. Okay, is it's talking about people praying for their will and their desire and making their plans without praying according to God's will. And he's saying whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him and his sin. In other words, if you know you're a child of God and you know that you should seek God's will first and yet you ignore that and just pray for your will, your will, your will, you are sinning and you are setting yourself up to fail because it's the <coughs> sin of leaving God out of your plans. Okay? Awesome. I've had people want to meet with me, okay? <laughs> numerous times they want to meet with me and I'll say okay what's the deal is you know they're like well I've joined the Marines it's like you want to meet? what was the purpose of the meeting <laughs> well I want to know if you think it's God's will and I promise you more than once I've had to say doesn't matter now does it right. you signed on right. you're going no matter what right yeah too late well you're not going to pray about it no <laughs> they're like why because you've already made the decision. I had a person will tell you, tell me one time, well, so and so, we're engaged and we're getting married in three weeks. You want to know what, what you think about it? So, are, you already proposed? You already bought the driver's license? The license? Yeah, driver's license. You already bought the marriage license? Yeah. You're going to do it no matter what? Yeah. Then what is there to pray about? Well, I want to know if you think it's God's will. Would you listen if I told you anything else? Well, we just want to know. No, you don't. You just want to get mad at me. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I saw a hand somewhere. I saw a hand somewhere. Uh, yeah. Yes, go ahead. I have a comment and a question, I guess. Okay. So when, you, when you're praying, and you're constantly praying for this one thing that you think you need so, so bad, and, and you're praying, the thing, I guess what you're trying to say is, Pray for it, but then trust God that He will answer. Not just constantly, constantly, you know, and worrying about it and all this, right? God, I want you to do it if it's your will, if it's your will. and if it's your perfect will. And if it's not your perfect will, I don't want it. Right. That's how I pray. Right. Yes. I mean, I've learned a lot since I've been here, and I know... I pray that about everything. I didn't, I didn't know, I mean, I was serving the Lord for 20-something and didn't realize that I was not praying the right way as far as right. if it's your will. Or, right. or going to Him for every little thing right. if it's your will. And since I've been here, I've done it exactly makes a how you let you know told us to pray. Right. And things have gone like just like well, I don't want to say perfect, but you know. Right. right. Well, Jesus God, said. Jesus said. Thank you. Jesus said, "Pray in this manner: Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven." Before you ever get around to give me, give me, give me, and my request, and here's my Santa Claus list. He says, "You always pray. Your will be done." And that is basically the kind of the same principle. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Now, there are some things that are always the will of God. I'm going to get to that in just a second. We're, we're, we're 20 seconds away from that, which I want to come back to that, okay? We'll come back to that in just a moment. Everybody say yay. Yay. Good morning, sir. Good morning. This is the fellowship hall. You ought to get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> He's been here like all day working. It's the, it's the joke. Okay. Um, so, again, you need, to, you need to pray according to it. Now, let's turn the page on page three. Y'all with me here? Yes. We're coming to the strong delusion. I promise. I know we're like over by the provost, but we're coming toward Jason. We're coming all the way around, okay? We've got to get around the cages first, okay? Um, so let me, let me do a little time out, okay? There are some things. Everybody say some things. Some. That are always the will of God. There are some things that you do not have to pray if it's God's will or not, okay? Um, the only reason you need to pray is to ask God to help you submit to them, okay? 
You never have to pray whether it's God's will to bring the pastor eminent. That that is that is, that is always no matter what Sister Sibley says, that is always the will of God. I just want to put that out there. Oh wait, that's not the Bible study, my bad. Let's come back to this. Um, you never have to pray about whether it's God's will for you to follow the plan of salvation. Right. Okay, you never have to pray whether it's uh, whether you should repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, who is it? Is it the is it the Mormons? I think when they come to your house, or is it JWs? Which one is it that asks you to pray and see if you have a warm feeling in your heart? Who is it? Mormons. Is it the Mormons? I think it's the Mormons. They say you need to have a pray. We ask you to pray about whether or not we you, this is really true, and see if there is a warm burning in your heart. They always end their encounter with that. Okay, to which I always tell them. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay, what you're saying is contradicting the word of God. I ain't got to pray about that. Right. I know it's not true. Right. I don't need no feeling, no way. I don't got to feel nothing. Right. Right. Are y'all with me? Why would, I, why would I pray for a warm feeling in my bosom? You might be like rubbing my back while I'm praying. There might be a heat wave come through. Or there might, you know, I might start having indigestion at that moment. And I'd be stuck believing false doctrine. I'm being funny, but I mean, you grasp what I'm trying to say? What is there to feel? What do you mean feel? You're going against the Word of God. About Jesus is not, oh, never mind. We'll leave it alone. So, you with me? Yes. Um, back to the Bible study. Um, okay, it's not, it's not God's will whether or not you should repent. Yes, you should repent. Right. Okay? Right. Unless you repent, you'll die in your sins. Right. That's pretty easy. Right. I'm going to pray about getting baptized in Jesus' name. What is there to pray about? He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Delay is doubt. Yes. What are you waiting for? Get up, rise, call on the Yes. Right? Okay? Wow, I'm really praying to see if the Holy Spirit's for me. What are you praying about? He already told you it's poured out. Your Holy Ghost is already poured out. You just got to receive it and believe God for it. Don't pray whether it's God's will. If you're praying, and I know people that have a hard time getting it because they were praying, God, if it's really, really your will, it's, it's your promise. He said it's, it's the promise is unto you and your children. That you got to realize, it's my, I'm getting so excited, I'm knocking over a water bottle. It's, it's your... It's, the cap is on. The cap is on. You were saved, Hermana, from being sprinkled in the name of the Father. So, it's your gift. You got to pray about that, right? The Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to eternal life. That's 2 Peter 3 and 9. You never have to pray if it's God's will for you to forgive somebody. <laughs> I wonder if God wants me to forgive him. <laughs> I think I'll go on a 20 minute fast. <laughs> go ahead and eat and just know that it's God's will to forgive him. Uh, what if I should stop sinning or love your neighbor or come to church? Okay, people will say, well, I, I'm just going to, you know, I'm a believer, but I'm still praying about whether or not I should come to church. Like, what Bible are you reading? What do you mean? Are we preaching the truth? Is the Spirit of God here? <laughs> What do you mean you pray about coming to our church? What are you talking about? Right. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Um, uh, so some people, I, I still wonder if I should worship God. Well, some things, I mean, <laughs> God is looking for those to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Right. Okay? Right. You don't got to pray for that, right? Okay. But in other areas of your life, particularly in the area of future plans and goals, we've got to be careful to desire God's perfect will in our life. And let, let, me, let me, I guess... Let me separate it this. This really isn't in the Bible study. Let me separate it this way. There is the general plan of God, or excuse me, the general will of God, yes. which means this is applicable to everybody. Everybody needs to do this. And then there is the specific will of God. Okay? And so what I'm, what I'm basically saying is the difference between seeking God for the general will and the specific will. The general will, everybody needs to do. Well, I wonder if I, sh I need to pray about whether I should pray. Okay, that's the general will of God. Okay, when you pray, when you fast, okay? Repentance, okay? Healing in Jesus' name. We pray for people, okay? I want you to grasp this. It's not our right, okay, to pray whether or not it's the will of God for somebody to be healed. Our job is to pray the prayer of faith, and then yet we trust God with the result. But what I'm saying is I never have a disciple saying, if it be God's will, be healed. They just said in the name of Jesus. Right. Right. And then God did as he did as he stood. People say, well, they always heal. No, they don't. Lazarus died eventually. Right. A second time. Nice. <laughs> the only thing worse than having one funeral is having two. Yeah. <laughs> Can you afford $10,000? 5000 So 
Did you have four years? Yeah, so you died twice this week. So, uh, I mean, he got up after four days, resurrected, but then eventually he died because he's not around. Right. At least I hadn't found him. We had this guy at church the whole they were about the same age, but I I'm not sure his, his name wasn't Lazarus. I'll leave y'all alone. Some of y'all some of y'all are looking at me like, what? Okay. So but but when we talk about the specific will of God, what do I do? Where do I go? What's my career choice? Who should I marry? What should I do in this situation? Right. How should I approach this? I'm facing this dilemma. You can fill in the blank, okay? In fact, let's just do it. Go around and talk about it. I'm just kidding. Okay? We don't want to go around your specifics, okay? But you can put it in, okay? And we got to be careful because the only thing more frustrating than being out of the perfect will of God is knowing you're out of the perfect will of God because you prayed yourself there. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And I cannot tell you how many minister friends I have, and if you're listening on SoundCloud, I love you, but the reason you're frustrated in ministry is because you left the perfect will of God three churches ago. Right. Right. <laughs> right. You were there six months, and you were there six months, and you were there six months. You know, it's, it's like I had a pastor friend one time, he got voted into a church. And he was walking around the church, the church property, and he saw the picture of all the former pastors on there, and he got to notice in the trend every two years. And he got to feel a little nervous about his situation. Because <laughs> apparently every two years they'd vote another preacher in, okay? Right. And I've got, I've got minister friends that are very, very frustrated because it was the perfect will of God two years ago, and now it's the perfect will of God over there, and now it's the perfect will of God over there. And, and they're frustrated, and their ministry's really going nowhere, and they're not really seeing fruit. And the truth is, is they left the perfect will of God about three, 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 well, maybe even yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So sometimes you get what you want, but you don't like what you want to get. We should always pray on our specific will. Is this helping anybody? Yes. So let's come back. Now we come back. We went around the provost. Now we're coming back to Jason here. Literally, we're getting closer. Um, actually, it's Abby's turn. Is that right? So let's read that opening scripture again. You guys back with me? Yes. Okay. Second Thessalonians 9 through 12. Help me out. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe in what is false in order that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay. Couple of points, okay? Whoever these people are who received the strong delusion, they received it number one, everybody say numero uno, okay? Because they refused to love the truth and be saved. Everybody say they would not love the they truth. Would not. That implies they had an opportunity to love the truth right. and to hear the truth, but they refused to love the truth, okay? <laughs> Secondly, they did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness, okay? In other words, they refused to love the truth about salvation or about their lifestyle, and they wanted someone to tell them they could live like they desired and still be all right. You ever heard that before? Okay. So when Jesus is in trial before his crucifixion, remember the story? Jesus is arrested. Um, they bring him before Pontius Pilate because the Jews do not have the ability legally to put someone to death. Okay. And Pilate asked Jesus if he were a king. I'm quoting John chapter 18. You can go read it yourself. And um, Pilate responded by asking a question. He says, what is truth? Because Jesus said, I've come to the world for truth and that everyone that loves truth hears my voice, okay? And when he said that, if you go read it, Pilate says, what is truth? And here's the thing. Then after he asked the question, walks away. The Bible says he turned and went outside the praetorium back to the, he turned and walked away before hearing the answer. Oh man, I can preach on that. There's the offering plates, okay? okay? A lot of people, they'll ask the question, they don't want to hear the answer. They think somehow answering the question and, and there's no answer. But there is an answer to your questions if you're willing to, to dig out a little bit, okay? And Pilate, the issue was, I want you to grasp something. Pilate knew what the truth was. He, he confessed it. He's innocent. Right. He hadn't done anything wrong. Right, right. He's not their political king, right? Okay. But if he has to admit that Jesus is the Messiah, it's going to cost Pilate the White House. I mean, it's going to cost Pilate <laughs> his political power and position, okay? And so Pilate did not want to love or receive the truth because it would have inconvenienced him. Sorry, I sound like Fox News there for a moment. <laughs> and, and it would have caused him to do things. I want you to grasp this. 
that would, Pilate would have had to abandon his selfish desires and dreams. Right. Okay? So what did Pilate do? Pilate gave him to the Jewish leaders because the truth would have caused him to have a radical change in his life. He would have had the unrest of the Jews, and he would have probably lost his position as a Roman consulate or governor. Y'all with me? Right. Now, the, the ironic thing is, this isn't in your notes, but the ironic thing is, is history tells us that just a few years later, Pilate lost it anyway. He took the Jews off and lost it anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> some people are like, well, this, I know it's going against God's word, but i got to save my job. Well, let me tell you something. You, you're going to lose it anyway. You might as well lose it for the right reason. Okay? John 17, 17 says that God's word is truth. Y'all with me here? Yes. Not just a part of it, all of it. The name of this series is Salvation Here a Little, There a Little, because God's precepts and principles are here a little and there a little. We have truth when we take all of God's word on the subject and put it together and let word or truth interpret truth, okay? One of the most common things I'll hear people say, especially people that are confused on the Bible, is they'll say, well, there's so many denominations out there. How do you know which one's right, okay? And my answer is the one that matches the Bible. Well, they all match the Bible. No. no. <laughs> they all match some of the Bible. Right, right, right. But, but, but only one possible belief system. I'm not saying we got it. I'm just saying, in general, there's only one possible way on any particular topic that perfectly coincides with the entire scriptures on every subject. Right. Well, there's so many different, for example, baptism. So many different pe people we baptize. People, they sprinkle and they, and they, they throw water on them and they, they, uh, they don't believe it at all and they immerse them and they immerse them three times. They do it in the title. They do it in this. They do it as an infant. They do it as an adult. How can we know? Okay, well, here's how you know. Okay? You take every scripture in the Bible on water baptism, put them together, take them in context of what, what, when they were written and who they were written to, proper, properly parse that, okay, put it together, let them interpret each other, okay, and when you have a, 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 a conclusion on water baptism that matches all of the scriptures where none of the scriptures contradict each other and they only supplement it, you've got truth, you've got God's view on the matter. Right? right? It's like, well, how you do that? Well, we just did that. Okay? Should have been here. Okay, should have been here in uh, uh, October the 4th, October 11th. Boy, we went through all of those, didn't we? Okay. All right. I mean, and so, so what I'm trying to say is, how do you know truth? Well, it, the Bible doesn't contradict itself, okay? So if your belief system, if I find a scripture that contradicts one of your beliefs, then your belief system's wrong or something. Right. Because the Bible doesn't contradict itself. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> um, what happens is, what, what many people do is, is when people reject truth, let me rephrase this, I'm being careful. When Christians reject, remember we're talking about the delusion, okay? When Christians reject truth, okay, they don't do so because they just turn away from the Bible. Now there's some people that do. But most Christians, they believe, quote, unquote, in the Bible. What they do is, they pick one or two scriptures on the subject and, and that, that say what they kind of want, want to say and ignore any other scripture that goes against what, what, what they don't want it to say. You with me there? They focus on one, okay? So then, and, 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 but, but they do so at the absence of not believing all the others. You with me there? Okay? I used to have a statement. A half truth is a full lie. Yes. Yes. If my kid tells me a half truth, they're in trouble. Right. <laughs> okay? And if you believe a half truth, you're in trouble. Right. Okay? Because a half truth is really a full lie. Okay? Now, I understand people are coming forward, but what I'm trying to say is, is let's take salvation, for example. Okay? Does a person need to believe that Jesus is the Messiah to be saved? Absolutely. The Bible says that. Do they need to repent of their sins? Yes. yes. Do they need to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the washing away of those sins? Do they need the Holy Spirit? Do they need to live a holy, separated lifestyle? Do they need to endure through persecution? Do they need to grow in God? Well, which one of those verses is the salvational formula? All of them. You with me? Yes. And what people do is they pick the first two, or they pick the first three, or they pick this one and this one and skip that one, or they pick this one and this one, they don't pick this one. Okay? You with me here? Mm -hmm. My wife ran into a lady recently in the store and asked her if she was Pentecostal, and she's not. She's not Holy Spirit filled at all. But she's picked and choose some things that we, we know is in the Bible over here, but she don't even have the Holy Ghost. Right. So she picked this and she picked this, but she ain't got this. <laughs> this and this don't save you. All of it saves you. Y'all with me? Okay. 
So this becomes a matter of a direction. I want you to grasp this, okay? We're fixing to kind of narrow it down. If a person is coming forward and deciding, des, des, deciding, de, deciding and desiring, you put deciding and desiring together, yeah, yeah, deciding, yeah, deciding, just yeah. Let's rewind the tape. Kids, that means never mind. Okay? If a person is coming forward and desiring to know God in all truth then when they're confronted with a new scriptural commandment, what are they going to do? In other words, okay, if somebody's moving forward in God, okay, and they're confronted with something, oh, I didn't know that was in the Bible. If they're moving forward in God, what do they do? They do it. Like our sister Sunday night. I never realized it was that strong in the Bible. Hey, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Amen. You know what that tells me? That person's moving forward. Right. Okay? Okay, if, look at me. If you're, I wish we had stairs in here. That was that was just a joke. Please don't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, unless you want to put on the two stories. Uh, I don't want to dig the basement. Okay. okay, if we had stairs right here, y'all with me? Y'all, y'all help me out here. Man, it's okay. We, we, I don't have a chair, but that, I, I'll end up killing myself. Y'all will help me up, but you will laugh. <laughs> Pretend like there were some multiple steps here, right? Okay. If I'm moving forward in God. What do, if I want to move forward, if my real goal is to move forward, what do I do when I come to another level that I didn't know was there that I've never yet achieved? What do I do? Thank keep going. Step up. Right? And then when I realize there's something else, what do I do? Step up. Okay? If, if, I, if I go, well, I've already gone this step. <laughs> I'm not moving forward. Right. Staying stagnant. Right. And really, you start heading back. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. And so, um, you need to understand that, that there's a lot of people who live for God faithfully at the level of believing in Jesus as the Christ. Right. Or even living at the level of true repentance. Or even living at the level of being baptized. Or even living at the level of just receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. But they need to go further into holiness and into during and to be in a category. Y'all with me here a little bit? Yes. And then there are people, right, okay, and I want you to grab. Here's where we're going, okay? But if a person gets to a certain point, okay, and there's another step of truth that's illuminated to them. I'm on the top of page four, but listen to me. If they get to the point where, where, where there's another step illuminated to them, and they say, I don't want to do that. In fact, I don't want that to be true. Right. In fact, I'd rather argue and look around Scripture and see if I can find verses that show me I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yes. And if they ignore Scriptural commands, they're heading the wrong way. And unfortunately, there are many who have taken this path. They, there are some people who are not really hungry for truth in God's Word. You, you ready? You ready? Yeah. Because if they were to continue going forward in God's word, they would have to swallow their pride. Right. Mm -hmm. They would have to admit there's something in the Bible they didn't know. Right. Which, by the way, if that bothers you, you're, you're an idiot. <laughs> because there is stuff in the Bible you don't know. Right. And there's stuff in the Bible I don't know. Right. That's why I still read it. <laughs> and once in a while, I guess somebody tells me, I'll meet somebody and they'll say, oh, you're a pastor. And I'll say, yeah, you do Bible study. Oh, yeah. I know everything there is to know about the Bible. <laughs> and what I say is, oh, really? Well, that's great. And what I'm thinking is, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're listening on SoundCloud and you're one of those people, well, <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> Because I've got my dad's scholarship and my my, my father-in-law's scholarship and Bible seminary and great men and women of God have put their time into it. And I've devoted myself almost tirelessly to it for the last 20 years. And there's still some things this past week I learned about the Bible. Right. My, my wife came in. She she works out every morning and then does her Bible reading. And we got in the car there and they go in somewhere. And she said, you know, she said, all this time, she said, she said, let me ask you a question. I said, what is it? She said, did you know that Hannah had other kids? I said, oh yeah. After she gave Samuel, she had sons and daughters. She said, I hate you. <laughs> she said, because I've been raised in a pastor's home. I've never heard anybody preach that after she gave Samuel up, the Bible says she had sons and daughters. God blessed her with more than that. She had one kid. She said, I never, I, she, I've read the Bible through before, but I've never noticed that verse. And, 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 and I was having fun with her. I, I, did, I really didn't know that part. But what I'm saying is, is, is that 
every time you go through it, you notice something new. Okay, don't ever get, if you ever get the attitude, well, I got it all together. Let me just fix something. Fixing to be humble. Seriously humble, okay? And that's why I tell people, people want to argue with me, I'll say, well, teach me the truth. Because if I'm wrong, and you've got a better understanding of the scripture, then I certainly want to be deal. And most time when I listen to most of them, I'm like, okay, okay, let me explain to you why that ain't so. Because you're forgetting this scripture. Why did that was there? Well, this scripture, okay. okay. But what I'm saying is, if, if they got a better understanding of the things of God, I don't ever want to be a man you can't talk to. I don't want to be a nabal. That word means fool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If we ever get as a Christian to say, well, I figured it all out. I got all I need to God. You're in a dangerous place. You're going the wrong direction. You've got to be ever, till we come to a knowledge of the truth, the Holy Ghost will lead and guide us into truth. Okay. Some of us may be further down the road than others, but if we're not keeping going down the road, we're, we're heading the wrong direction. Y'all with me here, okay? Alright? And so what happens is, is some people refuse to receive a love for the truth. In other words, okay, it's their attitude I gotta hurry. It's their attitude towards the truth when the Word of God speaks to something in their life that maybe contradicts what they believe or would cause them to have to change their life like Pilate or somebody. It's their attitude toward it. I love it. Yeah. When I suddenly realize, oh, this is what I've been doing wrong. Yes. Right? Yeah. People are like, that's a Bible. Yes, you have to do that once while makes you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they, uh, it's like, oh, I get it. Thank you, God. Okay, yeah. I love it. Okay, but then some people they're like, oh, I don't want it to be that. I just don't want it to be that. I don't want them to be speaking in tongues in church. Hmm. No. I kind of blindsided you on that, didn't I? <laughs> okay. Speaking in tongues in church is a God idea. Right. Right. Let everything be done decently in order. The verse before it is, Don't forbid really not to speak in tongues. Yeah. If you forbid to speak in tongues, then your church is not in order according to Scripture. You're against Scripture. Amen. All right. Amen. You want to go to heaven or not? Yes. Right? right? right. Yes. There are some people that say, well, I don't want a church that does it. Okay? And so they'll, I'm just using that example. That's a common one. And they're like, well, I'm not going to go to church people speaking in tongues because I, I, you know, I, I, I just don't want that to be. And they'll look and they'll try to find Scriptures and they'll say, well, the Bible says that one day tongues are going to cease. Yeah, the same scripture says that knowledge and and <laughs> all this other stuff is going to cease too. Knowledge isn't, de- has it stopped? Right. Knowledge is increasing. One day tongues is going to cease. Knowledge is going to spread. Are you with me? Yes. But one day it will, but not right now. Are y'all with me here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can't look for a scripture, but there's some people they don't want to believe the truth and take that next step. <laughs> And so they just harden themselves against that truth, okay? And that's very dangerous because they begin to live for God in a delusion. doesn't mean they're saved, but what it means is, is that God, I want you to hear it is, you ready? God will give people the desires of their heart. So if people really want to be convinced that something is not truth, God will not force them to believe truth. God will let them believe a lie. Right. Okay? And the next step is, you ready? How many of you with me so far? Yes. yes. Okay? How many of you agree with what I'm saying? Yes. But listen to me. Not only will God let them believe a lie if they really don't want something to be true, they want to reject it. Not only will God let them reject it, God will even send a spirit of delusion to help them reject it. Right. And that's where we just cross the line into weirdness. <laughs> okay? So to prove that to you, let's finish tonight's Bible study by going to an Old Testament example, which I love. You guys having fun? Yes. We've got 32 minutes, okay? There is an Old Testament passage. I'm on the sort of top part of page four. You doing all right? Yes. Uh, to our you guests, you doing all right over there? You got some more M&M's? You got some more M&M's? You good? You good? Chocolate helps it go down. You sure? <laughs> There's Fritos. Okay, Fritos. You have bugles. There's bugles and bugles. Okay. Uh, how many of you lose weight when Bible study's not in session? <laughs> I do. I'll slim up in January and then February get back in the time. Okay, hold this time. <laughs> are, y'all going in the face of in shape. Okay. So listen to what I just said, if people really just don't want something to be the truth, they want to fight it, they just don't want it, they just don't want it, okay, God will let them believe a lie, but he will not only let them believe a lie, he will help them believe a lie, because he's the God who opens his hand and gives people the desires of their heart, Right. okay, there's an Old Testament passage which helps this, the story is in 1 Kings 22, y'all with me? Yes. The story is that King Ahab of old, remember him, he was married to Jezebel, Jezebel, <laughs> Yes. Okay. Jezebel was the original Jezebel. <laughs> and uh, she was a flucy. Okay, South Texas, we would say she was the hoochie mama of hoochie mamas. Okay? 
So King Ahab of old and the prophet Micaiah. Everybody say Micaiah. Micaiah. The prophet Micaiah is true. And this is one of those passages that bothers people because God causes Ahab to believe a lie. But this is a vital story, okay? So again, we're 22nd chapter 1 Kings. To understand it thoroughly, you've got to realize we're coming at the end of the matter. Everybody say at the end of the matter. Okay? Let me bring you up to speed. been two minutes or less, okay? King Ahab had repeatedly rejected God through his reign of Israel. That's important to understand. God had done everything he can. He could. That was horrible English. God had done everything he could to reach King Ahab. Right. You ever heard of a guy named Elijah? Yes. yes. I mean, dude called fire down from heaven. Right. Like, like the, the, the king sends enemy soldiers to go get Elijah, and, and Elijah's like sitting on the thing, you know, whatever. I mean, he could call fire down from heaven and toast him. Right. Okay? Right. You know, finally, the third one comes up and begs him, say, please don't toast me. That, was a, that, that, that would be the right approach. Are y'all with me here? Right. Okay? I mean, the dude is powerful, okay? Right. I mean, he, he, he told, he said, it's not going to rain, and for three and a half years, it did not rain. <laughs> Okay. Apparently somebody does that in Texas too about every year. <laughs> I'm going to rain for 10 months. Anyway, so, okay. I mean, Elijah is a seriously powerful prophet. He went up. He didn't even die. He went up in a whirlwind of cherry. You want to go out? That's the way to go out. That's the way to have a, a non-funeral right there. That's what we call a non-funeral. Okay. I mean, Elijah's powerful, right? How many of you agree with that? You know the Bible well enough, okay? Um, and so, so Elijah withstood Ahab. And Ahab kept rejecting it. Why? Because Ahab did not want Elijah's message that the one God of Israel is the true God and there is no other God. He didn't want that to be because he was in love with a flucy named Jezebel who was from another nation and who was into Baal worship. Right. And she was making his life a living um, inferno. <laughs> so, so God kept going and reaching for Ahab over years and years. By this time, Elijah's gone. So, I mean, years. And, and Ahab rejected it, rejected it. He didn't want it to be, right? And so Ahab had gone as far to pass a law that if anyone worshipped the true God of Israel, they would be put to death and that all the Israelites had to worship the idol of Baal, okay? And so because of his blatant sinfulness and his false repenting, um, he, God had rejected Ahab completely. Y'all with me here? So in the story, what's happening is Ahab wants to do something. Ahab wants to go to war against a certain king. And Ahab wants it badly because he feels like he's going to get a lot of gold and a lot of stuff. It's going to be stuff that Ahab likes. Ahab was like materialistic. Okay? All right? And so because Ahab wanted it, he wanted success because we went to war. If you go out to war and you lose, that's really not fun. So, so... He, he wanted it to be God's will desperately, right. okay? So he calls all these false prophets of whom he pays their check, okay? And calls them to prophesy whether or not it's the will of God, okay? Right. And they come in and they, they prophesy, they, they come in, they prophesy good things and all this kind of stuff. And, I mean, it, it, it was great, man. He's like, this is great. Well, the issue is... They told Ahab what he wanted to hear. You're going to break their horns. You're going to do this. You're going to kick them in the knee. You're going to stump them in the foot. You're going to right? beat them by the hair of their chinny chin chin. Then we just, we just digress to three little pigs. Okay? So they tell them all the story. Well, the deal is, is the, the kingdoms were divided. Ahab, you know, he, he wants Jehoshaphat, okay, the king Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, to also go to war with him because he needed the numbers. Mm -hmm. The problem is Jehoshaphat is not a full, full-bledged full reprobate. Y'all still with me? Right. Jehoshaphat still has a little bit of fear of God in him. And Jehoshaphat's sitting there listening to these cats come in, knowing who pays their, their, their salary, and he's like, you know, is there any other prophet in Israel... That you ain't hired. <clears throat> that we could consult just to make sure. And 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 here here's the story. First Kings twenty two and seven. Where are we at? Well, Jason, we finally get to you. What was a long time, wasn't it? First Kings twenty two and seven. But Jehoshaphat said, "Is there not here another prophet of the Lord of whom we may inquire?" And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, "There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord." Micaiah. Micaiah, the son of em Emla, but I hate him. <laughs> For he never prophesies good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let, no, let not the king say, 
So now, now let's pause for a moment, okay? Why did King Ahab? I mean, he just told him to me. I hate him. Yeah, there's my chaos, but I can't stand him. Okay? Be careful what people say. I hate that pastor, preacher. Okay, especially if the pastor and preacher is a man of God. If you know he does. Okay. okay. Well, why did Micaiah hate? Why? Because Ahab lived his life beyond the word of God. Therefore, there was nothing a true prophet could say bless him. It was all the truth was always going to be you're going down. Yeah. Okay. Y'all with me? And so Ahab's life was impossible for God to bless. I want you to get that. Some people's lives God can't bless. Okay. And if you always think that the man of God has something negative to say to you, then maybe you ought to change your lifestyle to match the blessings of God. Right. There's a little proverb that if, if, if a man of God is rubbing the cat the wrong way, turn the cat around. In my case, get the cat out of here. But that's you know what I'm saying, okay? I always rub the cat the wrong way. And there's a cat next door who loves me. Every night he comes and finds me. Aww. So, um, yeah. I've missed her the last three times. No, I'm good. Um, save your letters. It won't help me. Okay. So, okay. So here's what happens, okay? I'm going to tell the story. we got to move, okay? So the, the servant, they send a servant. Go get Micaiah, okay? Well, here's the deal, okay? The servant's trying to help Micaiah out, okay? Okay, and as they're going to the phone room, he says, "You know why they're bringing you here, right?" And I'm, you can go read yourselves. First Kings twenty-two. I'm on a SRV, simply revised version, which isn't any shorter, but it's a lot more. <laughs> oh, he basically says, "Hey, bro, you know why they want you to hear, right? You know Ahab and Jehoshaphat, they really want to go to war. Ahab really wants this. Now, I'm, I just want you to know, bro, that the last twenty prophets have all said that Ahab's going to win. Wink, wink. <laughs> That's what he says to Micaiah, right? For him in the throne room." So Micaiah walks in, and Ahab's already bent down like some people in church. <laughs> He's already down, got his, got, his, got his hands crossed. He's kind of looking. And Micaiah, I love this because this, this is scriptural proof I can be sarcastic and go to heaven. <laughs> Micaiah, go read it. Walks in and goes, Oh, king, the Lord has told me you're going to have a great victory. And, and Ahab gets up and says, Shut up doing that. You're lying. <laughs> go read it. Okay, now, now, now time out just a minute, okay? Micaiah was being facetious, okay, which is another word for whatever. So, okay, and Ahab instantly, now I want you to grasp something. I want you, oh, I want you to get this. we got to hurry. I don't want you to get this, okay? Ahab already knew what Micaiah was going to say. What does that tell you? Well, no. Now, now, let me just say this. I've had people put words in my mouth. Other people say, well, I didn't want to call you because I knew what you are going to say. <laughs> well, I, I always ask them, well, what was I going to say? <laughs> and I've had people tell me what I was going to say, and I say, that's not totally not what I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay? But then there have been other times where people are like, well, I didn't ask you. Why not? I knew what you are going to say. <laughs> well, wasn't that the voice of truth in your life? Right. Mm -hmm. If the man of God's voice in your little head was telling you anyway, and you knew, but a sister simply probably wouldn't be for that, what does that tell you? Right. Some people are like, some like, I can't hear the will of God. No, you don't want to hear the will of God. Right. Right. That's good. I can't hear the voice of God. You don't want to hear the voice of God. Right. Right. Okay. You know, with me here? Yes. Our, our, our lady, I've told the story before, I ain't got time to get up. The young lady, we were sitting in the restaurant and I was half joking. And she was like, she was like, I just, I'm not sure if this is the will of God for this young man to do. I don't want to talk to y'all because I know what you're saying. I, I told her, I said, well, what do you have to do to convince you to stop the will of God for your baby? Well, such, 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 such would happen. And I was, I'll be honest with you, I was kind of half joking. <clears throat> I just reached over and said, in Jesus' name, Lord, if it's not your will for her to be her, let it happen. She was, oh, God's not going to do that. Uh, About three days later after the conference, I got a phone call. She was in tears. And I was actually kind of shocked because I was kind of being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, boom, boom, and boom, it happened. And you know what she said? But I love him. And I was like, okay. <laughs> First of all, I don't give real because I ain't married either way. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Well, what's really the issue here, Ahab? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Okay? Y'all with me here? Okay? And so, the problem was, Ahab knew the truth, didn't want the truth, and wanted... He wanted to find somebody who would tell him what he wanted to be the truth rather than the truth. Okay? 
And I know a lot of people today do the same thing King Ahab of old did. They want something desperately. They know in the back of their mind it's probably not right. They come to the man of God in their life, a pastor. They ask what he thinks. He tells them the truth. And then they go find somebody else and ask them what they think. And if they tell them the truth, they'll go find somebody else. And I've had people come to me and ask advice. And I'll say, well, I, I, I'll pray with you and pray about it with you. And after praying about it, I'll say, I feel this way. And three weeks later, I'll, I'll find out they did the opposite. It's like, okay, what happened to our talk? Well, I asked so-and-so. You know, he only comes like once every month in the church, but he just felt like that it was supposed to be this. Find me a brick wall. Beat my head against it so I feel good when I stop. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I, mean, I don't care. You don't have to come to me for life choices, but if you do come and I pray about it, at least consider it <laughs> over some reprobate that comes once every two months and his, his whole family's backslid and, and his wife are divorced three times and, and you're going to follow him? I don't know. Give me a start. <laughs> I'm being a little candid tonight. I need to, I need to rain it in. I need some M&Ms. Come on, somebody. Okay, so, so the attitude of Ahab is the attitude of many religious people today. I'm on top of page five. I want you to grasp this. Some people judge a church or a ministry by whether or not it matches what they want them to say. Rather than, are they preaching what is the Word of God? And I'm going to let you in a little secret. I don't believe that a preacher should be abrasive just to be... A, some preachers preach the truth and they're just a jerk. There's some preachers I hear preach the truth and I just think, man, I don't like them and I know they're telling the truth. They're just a jerk. I don't think you have to be a jerk personality, okay? That's not what I'm saying, okay? But... You need to understand that if a preacher is really a man of God and is preaching the Word of God, okay? Number one, if that's so. If number two, you are not perfect. Amen. Right? If, if those two are in play, there's going to be times where the man of God is going to preach something that speaks directly to you that you don't like. And if it never happens, you're in the wrong church. <laughs> or you're perfect. <laughs> I'll let you figure out. What you're okay. Now, okay. and there are people they'll go find a church. Well, I just like when they preach over here better. Okay, time out. The goal shouldn't be I want to find a preacher or ministry that matches what I already think. The goal should be is does it match this? Right here. So here's where we get to, and here's where we end. Okay, we've got about uh, I don't know 17 minutes. There's hope. Okay. Okay. In the story, Micaiah tells King Ahab the truth. Okay, I'll tell you the truth. You're fixing to die. <laughs> That's like that one, dude. <laughs> See, sometimes you preach the word of God, it's not always positive. <laughs> the positive spin, we're fixing to have a better king. Oh, wait, that's not good for you. Let's see. <laughs> the positive spin Ahab is you're going to get to go to war. Right. And you're fixing to lose your life. Okay, and all these other guys are a bunch. Of, and if you go read it, one of the other false prophets came over and slapped Micaiah and put horns on and was acting like a bull and said, "God showed me He told us Gay yeah, going to be like a bull." I and mean, people, this is before YouTube. They had nothing to do. Just <laughs> <laughs> parading around. Okay, go read it. Go read it. Then. You can took, find it. And, and, and are y'all with me here? And Micaiah took the horn. The Bible's very interesting if you read it. Yes. <laughs> broken. It said, "God says that you're going to be broken, just like that right there." And then Micaiah, the Spirit of the Lord comes on him and Micaiah relays a vision of what has transpired recently in heaven. And here it is. 1 Kings 22, 19. Who gets to read the long one? Sister Sabrina. She's been practicing for hours. Go ahead. You know, but we skip for the ice son. He should be able to go ahead. 1 Kings 22, 19. And Micaiah said, Therefore I hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing beside him on his right hand and on his left. Host of heaven refers to angels. So there's all these angels around him. Go ahead. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Ramoth Gilead, Ramoth. yeah. It's a, it's a, a, a town, a, a battle site. And one said one thing and another said another. Then the spirit came forward and stood before the Lord, saying, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, By what means? And he said, I will go out and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, You are to entice him, and you shall succeed. Go out and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these your prophets. The Lord has declared disaster for you. Wow. 
Ouch! <laughs> Scary, right? Okay. So this seems very similar to what happened in the first book of Job, where we learned that some people believe some really dumb things. They believe the devil's in hell. The devil doesn't want to go to hell. The devil never goes to hell. No. He goes to the lake of fire and hell goes in the lake of fire. Go read your Bible. Next next spring, prophecy. You actually read the Bible, there's amazing things in it, okay? The devil roams the earth, going back to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. He also still has access to heaven. Because in the book of Job, he walked in the courtroom of, of God and spoke to him. And so apparently do lying spirits have access to heaven. God's more in control of this than you think he is. This is messing up with all your theology right here. Okay? And, and, and here's the deal, okay? God, I want you to understand that there was a lying spirit, okay? When those, I want you to grasp something. When those prophets stood before Ahab and prophesied, you're going to win. You're going to make it. Okay? They felt a spirit from God on them, helping them prophesy. Right. Right. They weren't making it up. There was a spirit from the throne of heaven mm -hmm. that came over them and caused them to speak, and they believed it. But it was not the Holy Spirit. It was a lying spirit. It was from God, but it was not of God. Right. Right. That's right. It's a little quiet in the room. And it was okay. It's a little quiet in SoundCloud. <laughs> okay? Did they feel something? Yes. Did they feel a spiritual presence when they prayed and prophesied? Yes. But it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was a lying spirit. Why? Because these men had rejected the truth of God's right. Word. You with me here? They and Ahab had repeatedly not wanted God's Word to be true and wanted to do what they wanted it to do. And so God not only let them believe a lie, he sent a lying spirit to come over them to feel, let them feel spiritual unctions. Yes, yes. Is that what it says, folks? Yes. Yes. He put a lot. The Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all your prophets. They felt something. I want you to grasp something. And there was more of them than there was Micaiah. But at the end of the day, what happened? Micaiah. He died. They had died. Okay? Just because they felt something and just because they had a spiritual unction, it was still a lying spirit. It's just because. He believed it and received it, and it was what he wanted to hear. Are y'all with me? Yes. Okay. And so God sent a delusion, a spirit from the direction of God, but not of God. And God sent it to fulfill their heart's desire of those people who had repeatedly rejected truth. Y'all with me? There's a lot of religious movements today that parade under the banner of Christianity and yet reduce some fundamental truths of the Bible. They reject the fact that Jesus is God. They reject Jesus' name baptism. They reject the need for a holy lifestyle. They, they whatever. And there's two classes. I want you to understand there's a major difference between the two. I want you to listen to me. There are some people who are coming forward. So yes. God blesses their ministry yes. with the genuine Holy Spirit because as long as they're moving forward, God's going to try to encourage them because right. the Holy Spirit will lead and guide them all true. Right. Just because they don't have holiness or have this doesn't mean they don't get the Holy Spirit. Right. They do get the real Holy Spirit. Right. But, but in God, as long as they're moving forward, God will, God will work through them. Right. But there are others who have known the truth or seen the truth and refuse to believe it and want to believe a lie. And in those churches, there's a difference. Because, come on somebody, they have a spirit manifest themselves, a spirit from God. But it's a delusion. It's a spiritual experience that caused them to feel like they're okay at their level. Exactly. And there's a difference. You know how you know the difference? I mean, I know the difference? What do they do when they're confronted with further truth? People that are moving forward keep moving up. Right. People who are in a delusion say, no, that's not in the Bible. We just right. need... That's the difference. Yes. It's, it's a difference in attitude. Yes. Amen. Y'all with me? Okay. If a per just say, if a person wants to believe something bad enough, God will let them. But here's the next step. If a person repeatedly rejects truth, God will give them over to a strong delusion. He'll not only let them believe what they want to believe, He'll send a lying spirit from heaven to them mm -hmm. and let them have an encounter with a spiritual presence. It's not the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But they will actually have a spiritual experience that reinforces what they believe. Exactly. That's the strong delusion sent from God because they love not, they receive not a love for the truth. Therefore, God turned them over to a strong delusion. It's a process, though. Yes, sir. So, are you are you saying that 
It's possible for a whole congregation who have once known truth to turn their back or be cold and indifferent towards it and walk away from the holiness. Absolutely. And still have a spirit <coughs> manifest himself, right. still speak in tongues, still have quote unquote gifts in the spirit, even though it typically dies out because that's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but all but but it's not a and I've been in some of those churches and it's it, <coughs> When the Holy Spirit moves in, if you got the Holy Spirit in you, and the Holy Spirit comes into a place, there's a peace. When I'm in those places and people start speaking in tongues and stuff, there's a, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm nervous. Right. I can, I, I, there's an unrest. There's a disconnect. I can instantly tell the difference. I can look at my wife, and we can tell by a look. We can immediately quote this whole Bible study to each other. I've done it. I look over her, she's at me, and we put her head down, and she's thinking... This is a delusion. Right. Because they've been believing this for 20 years and had not come any closer. Or they used to believe truth and they turned away from it. It's a different matter of direction. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, kind of what you just said, I just wanted to clarify. Sure. Is it possible for if the pastor or whoever is in leadership or whoever is in the direction of the church, for them to be on the delusion and then to teach any new converts that, that then they would be experiencing a false... Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And that's why we have people come to our church who have a bad experience of speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Or about people come to me that don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And what, I mean, my immediate question is why? Because I've seen it fake. Mm -hmm. Or I've seen it where I knew it was, where I'd seen it where the, and I've seen people have seen it in our church and say, okay, that was real. What was the difference? I don't know if they could tell. But yes. And that's why in our church, you'll hear me make a statement. And I'm saying it partly to be funny, but I do mean it serious. If I ever get up here and say there's three gods and her name is Mary, mm -hmm. preach something which is obviously, thank you, but the only person. <laughs> if I start preaching something that's, been, that's obviously not true, okay, even if I'm convinced of it and greatly persuaded of it, you need to check your Bible. That, that's, that, that's the whole point of the, these Bible studies is make sure what I'm teaching you is true. Make sure it's in the Bible yourself. Why do people just blindly follow people in this stuff? Because they don't just believe whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and because they don't ever check what they're saying themselves in their scripture, I'm, I'm a guess I'm kind of the opposite. I'm like, here's the scripture. Go read it. I saw a hand. Go ahead. Does this mean that uh, in the present heaven... <clears throat> with these, with these uh, fallen angels that are around the, in the throne room of God, that there's sin in heaven right now? There's not sin in heaven in the sense that, that they're not allowed to lie in heaven, but the, 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 demo, the demons and Satan do have access to God's throne, and they will be cast down. Most people teach that the war, we're getting a prophecy here, we'll answer <laughs> next, next week, or next um, year. <laughs> okay. Revelation 12, a lot of people teach, the division of the woman clothed in the sun, a lot of people teach that, that when Satan was cast down, that happened at the cross, or that happened in the beginning, or whatever, okay? They miss that Job happened after creation, right. and that 1 right. Kings 22 is after creation, right. okay? Satan, he, 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 the dragon fell from heaven and took a third of the stars, which means a third the angels went with him as far as a fallen state but he still has access to heaven and he will not lose that access to heaven and be cast down un until the end times when you get into Daniel's 70th week. People miss that his tales in Revelation 12, the tales statue of the third of the stars and him being cast down are two separate parts of the vision. Okay? And I'll, people go around and around with you on that. They just need to read Daniel 12, I mean, Revelation 12 and actually read it as for what it is. Okay? But yes, I believe that. And, that the, the, and the deal is, is that you can believe something from God, but not of the Holy Spirit. It's why we have the term Holy Spirit. It's why we, we talk about we don't want just a spirit to move. And here's the number one thing. If you're ever in a, in a congregation and somebody takes off the safeguard of the name of Jesus, like they say, this is a new thing. It's not found in the Bible. We don't pray in the name of Jesus. Run. Run as fast as you can out of there. Because they just removed all the spiritual safeguards off that service. And that's why you get people barking like dogs and say it's the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Ghost, folks. It's a spirit from God, but it's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit manifests itself like it did in the book of Acts. And people didn't bark like dogs. They end up living holy and forgiving each other. And putting aside their prejudice. And being willing to give their life for Jesus. Okay? Like, Not drink the Kool-Aid. Isn't it kind of like also like when 
like the spirit of delusion or whatever, but even like you going back into Pharaoh with Moses, it was like God would open up a place, but then he would harden Pharaoh's heart. You know, Absolutely. because he wasn't going to change no matter what anyway. Yes. You know, and God knew that or whatever. Right. He would soften it. He would say, yeah, well, well, release it. But then he would harden his heart again. The Bible says in three different places, the Bible says that, that, that Satan hardened Pharaoh's heart. The Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And the Bible says that Pharaoh hardened Pharaoh's heart. Which one was it? All three? All three. Yeah. Y'all yeah, with me? Okay, the first thing is, is the devil hardened his heart. Because the devil had him in false doctrine. And then, even though he had the truth revealed to him, Pharaoh hardened his heart. And after Pharaoh got to the point repeatedly where he was rejecting truth, then God hardened his heart. Right. He says, okay, if you really want to believe this, I'll let you believe what you want to believe. But he hardened his heart so he could destroy you too. Do I follow me? King Nebuchadnezzar also had the same thing happen to him. And, Absolutely. And he ended up coming to God. Absolutely. He did. He did. Because he acknowledged in repentance, yes. But if they refuse to repent and acknowledge truth, then God gives them a strong delusion. Okay? Absolutely. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So when Micaiah spoke, those other false prophets were there. Absolutely. They confronted him. And they confronted him and it's you wonder how you, you have to understand you know you have to believe there was something beyond normal that would cause them to right. still hold on right to what they they had. were feeling an unction they were feeling right. the morning but they didn't understand the difference they yeah. were also supporting them on the payroll of a king who was a god reject yeah but but it's just been it's always just kind of blown question. my mind about that that they yes they could actually be there hear him say that and still yes be and it goes it back it goes back to jason's question so yes they submitted themselves to a leader who had purposely gone that way and so they were fooled and they were confused does that make sense absolutely yeah. Another thing I'd point out is there was a bunch of them and only one of Micaiah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> There's always going to be more people that are deluded than speak the truth. Yes. Narrow, straight is the gate that leads to their lesson. Wide and broad is the way that leads to destruction. If everybody in quote unquote Christianity believes like you, you're probably not believing scripture. Right. <laughs> not fully. Yeah. Okay, just a thought. Okay, let's finish up. We've got exactly three and a half minutes. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to read these Roman scriptures. We've been reading this. This is our weekly meditation scripture in our church uh, memorization scripture for this month, this month, or for this week. Romans 1:21. For although this is the Apostle Paul, okay, for although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. Remember I say it started there. Started there. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became full. So these were a people, the people he's talking about were the people of the world. They once knew God, but they refused to glorify him as God. And it came from a lack of thanksgiving, which is another Bible study in the time, okay? And so they rejected the truth. Everybody say rejected the truth. Excuse me. You were created to worship God. They rejected that. Okay? So let's see what happens. Why don't you look at me? For those on SoundCloud, I'm doing my fingers in a downward spiral. This is what happens. Okay? You, you know, you've learned the lesson, never say it can never get worse. <laughs> never say that. Because <laughs> then your in-laws call and say, hey, we're coming to see you for seven months. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> First, uh, Romans 123. And exchange the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds, animals, and reptiles. So when they... When they ceased to be thankful to God and started this downward spiral, the first thing to go was direct worship in the presence of God directly. Right. And they substituted images and idolatry. Idolatry is always a step associated with the rejection of truth. Right. We don't have time to go through church history, but that was the case. They rejected the truth of who Jesus Christ was. They changed their doctrine and they changed their baptism. And then all of a sudden, hey, let's pray to saints and let's worship idols and let's right. have relics. And yeah. here's Peter's toenail. It'll heal you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Romans 1 24 therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because why because I want you to understand God gave them up God gave them up to the impurity of their heart he said you know what I'm going to let you do what you want to do and not even going to stop you right. I've heard people say well there's a God how come we don't like just come stop all the sin in the world because he's the God who allows people gives people the desires of their heart right. okay and why? Because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie 
and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Right? This honor their bodies among themselves is a reference to sexual sins. Right. Romans 1.26, this is still in the Bible. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passing. Dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their errors. I, I don't think I really have to elaborate much on that. I think most of you can figure that out. Romans 1.28, And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, here it is, God gave them up. Everybody say, God gave them up. God, God, gave, them up. God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. The King James word for debased is reprobate. And the idea is a castaway. Somebody's been rejected or worthless, okay? God let them believe whatever they wanted to believe was right. Let them feel justified in their actions. They justified their sexual sins. They justified their homosexual behavior. They justified their idolatry. And in the name of religion and God, they propagated their personal opinions. And in some of them, they had religious experiences, like she was saying, to back it up. But it was a strong delusion. It was from God. But it wasn't of God. It was not the Holy Spirit. Y'all with me? If this does not, say it again. It is an it is an odd. God gave them the best mind. They do what all not to be done. Yes, they stop doing their alts. Two minutes Sunday night. Romans one twenty nine. It was a little hard hitting Sunday night. Romans one twenty nine. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. This is telenovelas. They are gossips, <laughs> slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Isn't that a portrait of our society today? Why? Why? Because they receive not a love for the truth. Okay? And so... To summarize, if people do not love truth and want to live differently from the Word of God and yet want to seek a relationship with God under those circumstances, y'all with me? Yes. Okay? It's very dangerous to say, well, I don't want to believe that. I don't, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want that to be true. You know, I want, I want it to be this. God, let it be this. Okay? And if they still are seeking a spiritual religious experience with God, it's dangerous because they can feel have spiritual experiences. And in some cases, they even speak in tongues. And have gifts operating. But it's a it's like the prophets in the chaos day, the false prophets. It's a lying spirit, or it's a, pro, a spirit sick from God as a delusion. It's not the Holy Spirit. Right. Because if your spirit of God that's working in your life is not leading you into holiness, which means separation from the world, it's not the Holy Spirit. Right. Because the Holy Spirit leads people to become holy or separated. Right. 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 You follow what I'm saying? Because we become more worldly. Right. You grasp what I'm saying, okay? So, to, to summarize in about 30 seconds, as we're over our time tonight, okay? Because y'all are jokes. Um, I'm just kidding. Okay, to summarize, last week we talked about blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which are which are it's kind of the opposite of this. People who don't want anything to do with supernatural, and every time they see the supernatural at work, they say it's of the devil. Right? Right. And when you do that, having experienced the Holy Ghost, you put yourself in some pretty dangerous grounds. You get in the boot cycle where you can't have the miraculous. Because unless the Spirit of God is drawing you to repentance, you can't repent. Okay? This is the opposite side of this. This is, I don't want this, this, or this. But I still want to have a relationship with God. That's dangerous too. Because if you reject truth, you may pray, well, I just don't want it to be that. God, don't let it be that. And God will let you feel that way. You didn't have an experience to back you up. But in the end of the story, what happened? They had your dead. And truth is truth. Just because you believe a lie, just because a lot of people believe a lie, don't make truth truth. Okay? And so um, you can do some things to keep yourself from ever receiving a strong delusion from God. Be open to the fullness of the teaching of the Scripture in every area. Right. We'll never get to a place where somebody can't correct you. Right. If you ever get to a place where, you, where nobody can correct you, you're, you're in danger. Okay? Yeah. Never reach a place where I no longer want to know more about what God has commanded or promised. I must never reach a place where I would rather ignore the clear teaching of Scripture in one area simply because I don't want to change that area of my life. If there's a passage of Scripture you'd rather the preacher not preach about 
then he, don't, he shouldn't have to preach on it. You know you need to change that area. Right. Okay? I must strive to base everything that I do and am on the Word of God and the principles of life found with it. God sends a man of God to speak what you need to hear, not just what you want to hear. You should love Him for that because you should love the truth. Right. Okay? Uh, if we'll do these things, we can endure the end to be saved and we can follow the leading of God. In Jude, we find him writing in verse 3, I wanted to write of our common salvation. But he said, I realized it was necessary for me to write to you of the faith which was once delivered to the saints. It's very specific in Greek. It was delivered once for all. We do not have an evolving gospel that needs to be updated with the latest theories of psychology and sociology and legality. But we have the faith which once for all was delivered to the saints. It saved people in the first century. It saves people in the 21st century.